Taipei, Taiwan is a city with everything from amazing food, history, a happening nightlife, beautiful places to visit, as well as some of the friendliest people you'll ever meet. I mean, I travel fairly frequently and it honestly still is one of the top cities I've ever visited. But I'm sure I don't need to convince you because if you've clicked on this video, there's a good chance that you are already planning a trip to Taipei and perhaps are in need of some ideas in terms of what to do. Well, that's what this video is for as I'm going to be showing you some of the free or budget friendly places that you absolutely need to visit and or to eat at while in Taipei. I will include directions, venue highlights and prices so that you can plan according to your budget and time constraints. I will also be giving you the names of the places and or dishes you need to order in English, Chinese and Chinese phonetics so that you can navigate yourself despite any language barriers. There are also chapters in this video so that you can choose and customize your own personal Taipei adventure. Consider this your ultimate itinerary planning guide to Taipei as it is my goal to give you as much information as I can so that you can make the most of your time in Taipei. But before we get into it, hi, I'm Steve from The Fat Life Project and I post weekly food and travel content in cities across the world. And so if that sounds like your jam, I highly recommend subscribing so that we can go on weekly fat adventures together. With that out of the way, let's get straight into it. And you seriously can't say that you've been to Taipei unless you've tried out a traditional Taiwanese breakfast. I mean, with none of the dishes usually costing above three US dollars, there is absolutely no excuse for you to not try. It is always without fail my first stop whenever I visit Taipei. And in this next section, I will tell you what to order and where to go for the best Taiwanese breakfast in Taipei. But let's start with what is a traditional Taiwanese breakfast? Well, a classic Taiwanese breakfast consists of three main elements, soy milk, eggs, and freshly clay oven-baked pastries. Carbs is life as far as Taiwanese breakfasts are concerned and a good deep-fried yotel, aka deep-fried Asian donuts, brings me right back to my childhood. There are several ways to have this and my personal favorite is in a good sticky rice roll known as a fan tuan. I usually have it with the egg and pork floss known as fan tuan jia tan, which is basically a glutinous rice roll stuffed to the brim with pork floss egg and a crispy yotel. So freaking good. Another absolute must try Taiwanese breakfast staple for me is a good bowl of salty soy milk. Yes, you heard that right. A bowl of hot salty soy milk. Xian dou jiang. The soy milk would have slightly curdled from the heat giving the dish an overall pudding-like consistency. It is then topped off with some green onions, pickles and shrimp oil. And guys, it is honestly one of the best things I've ever had in my life, especially if you're there during winter. You will be ordering it at every single Taiwanese breakfast spot that you go to during your trip. In terms of where to go to experience this, there are plenty of delicious breakfast spots but the top three I would recommend are Fu Hang Soy Milk, Fu Hang Dou Jiang, which has been operating since 1958 and is a multi Michelin Bib Goman winner. It is located in the Zhongchen district with the closest station being Shan Dao Temple Station which is on the Blue Banan Metro Line. Highly recommend to get there early as there will be queues. Another one of my favorites is Yong He Soy Milk King, Yong He Dou Jiang Da Wang, which is located in the Da'an district, approximately 5 minute walk from the Da'an station. The queues here are not as crazy as Fu Hang, and so if you're not too fussed about that Michelin rating, this is definitely a good alternative. Yet another one of my favorites is one I actually went to a few weeks ago, which is Si Hai Soy Milk King, Si Hai Dou Jiang Da Wang. This one is located in the Da Tong district, and like the other two, is highly popular. So do expect the queue, though I didn't have to wait too long at this spot. I've previously done videos on Fu Hang and Yong He. You can find them in my Taipei playlist which I will include at the end of this video. As most breakfast spots typically open at 7 or even sometimes at 6 a.m. in the morning, you now have the whole day ahead to walk off some of that breakfast by checking out some amazing must-visit spots in Taipei. Some historical, some a testament to the cultural and technological hub that Taipei is becoming. In this next section, I'm going to be showing you some spots in Taipei that are absolutely free to visit. Starting with the Elephant Mountain Trail, Xiang San Sing San Bu Dao, which is hands down one of the best ways to get a 360 degree panoramic view of the city as well as stunning shots of Taipei 101. It is a fairly easy trail that would take you about 20 to 30 minutes to climb. The closest station to the starting point of the trail is Xiang San Station, which is on the Red Samsui Sing Yi Line. If you do plan to go, may I recommend going first thing in the morning for sunrise or for sunset as that view is stunning. 
morning. Hot tip, if you are headed there, please wear proper track shoes as the path can get very slippery and also please bring insect repellent as the mosquito situation on the track up can be brutal. I unfortunately went on the day that Taipei decided to rain but on the upside, there were barely any mosquitoes and also I got to see a view of Taipei City that most probably don't get to see. But if you're not so keen on the idea of a trail, fear not, there are still plenty of spots in the city that are well worth your time. Starting with the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall, Zhongchen Jinian Tang, which is a monument that was erected in memory of the former president of Taiwan, Chiang Kai-shek. Another memorial that's worth visiting is the National Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall, Guo Li Guo Fu Jinian Guan, that's erected in memory of Republic of China's national father, Dr. Sun Yat-sen, back in 1972. I honestly thought that I would only spend like half an hour here tops, but what I did not anticipate was that there are actually plenty to see and do here. Here. For starters, there are eight galleries here containing art and displays depicting Sun Yat-sen's life and his work. It is also a multi-purpose space for the public and when I was there, there was a small market happening in the outside space. I ended up spending about two and a bit hours here. I have included the Chiang Kai-shek and Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall's Google Map location and addresses in Chinese in my description box so that you can plan your travel accordingly. Located mere minutes around the corner from the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall is the Shongsan Cultural and Creative Park, known as the Shongsan Wenchuang Yuanchi. This space used to be one of the largest tobacco factories in Taipei and has since been beautifully repurposed into a cultural space. Much like the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall, I also spent way more time than I had initially planned here. There is plenty to do starting with the restaurants and cafes that are perfectly located over a lake with a view of the city. I also stumbled into a huge day market in the North Tobacco Factory building selling secondhand clothes, old records and jewelry amongst many other things. Shongsan Cultural Park is also home to the Taiwan Design Museum where the featured exhibition changes from time to time. For example, when I went, the featured exhibition was No Signa, which focused on how we can make designs and inventions more sustainable over the next 100 years. Honestly recommend you allocate at least two hours here in the daytime. But there's perhaps no building more representative of Taipei than the Taipei 101. It is the second tallest building in the world and it is also the center of one of the most exclusive shopping districts in Taipei. It is of course completely free to capture your insta-worthy pictures outside and also free to walk around inside side of the Taipei 101 building. However, for about 20 Aussie dollars, you can catch one of the quickest elevators in the world up to the Taipei 101 observatory for an absolutely unbeatable view of the city with some additional attractions to see, such as the damper in the middle of the building that keeps this tall building stable throughout typhoons and earthquakes. Oh, and also if you're in town during New Year's, this is the spot to go to to watch fireworks. I've done it several times and let me tell you, it is stunning. As always, Google map locations and the address in Chinese has been included in my description box for the Shongsan Cultural Park and Taipei 101. But perhaps you have more than a couple of days in the city or are looking to be a bit more adventurous and venture a bit further away from the city. Well, in this next section, I'm going to be showing you some spots that are about an hour or so away from the city but are well worth visiting. There are three popular tourist destinations, the Yeliu Geopark for gorgeous rock formations, the Houdong Cat Village, which is a must for cat lovers, and obviously Jiufen, which allegedly inspired the Hayao Miyazaki film Spirited Away. A little bit about each location. Yeliu Zhe Park, aka Yeliu Di Zi Gong Yuan, is home to a number of unique geological formations, including the iconic Queen's Head, Nu Wang Tou, and is located along a cape stretching out from the town of Wanli, overlooking breathtaking views of the ocean. Transport wise, you will have to catch a bus. There are several routes depending on your point of origin, and as such, I have just included the Google Map pin and address in Chinese in my description box so that you can plan your trip accordingly. But if if you're a cat lover, you're gonna absolutely love this next one. The Houdong Cat Village. Houdong Mao Chun is a village in the Ruifang district in New Taipei, known for its cat population. It is about 50 minutes on the train from the Taipei main station. As always, I've included the Google Map pin in my description box to help you plan your trip. Houdong was formerly a small mining town and you can in fact still see the mining train tracks throughout the little town. The village's population eventually declined with the fall of the coal industry and it officially became a refuge 
refuge for abandoned cats in 2008. As the word of mouth spread, the number of cats living there increased and before you know it, cat lovers near and far began visiting this village. Today, it is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Taipei. You will probably end up spending an hour or so here and it is a nice stop before or after this next destination which is about 15 minutes away. And Jufen was by far the destination that I was most looking forward to checking out for the first time. And it is not hard to understand why once you've had a bit of a wonder around the village which comprises of narrow alleyways filled with food stalls, tea houses, souvenir shops and many more. There is definitely something to do here for everyone. But the jewel of Jufen, if there ever was one, is the stunning Ame Tea House. It is hands down the must visit spot in Jufen. Ame is a multi-story tea house strategically located a little off the main street perched on the top of a hill. Their balcony offers a 360 degree view of the Keelong Mountain and Northern Shores. I went with a couple of friends and we actually spent a few hours here simply enjoying the serenity of the view while drinking some tea and having some snacks and enjoying each other's company. How to get to Jufen depends on if you travel directly from Taipei City or from Hotong Cat Village as I mentioned before. As such, I've included the Google Map pin for you in my description box. Okay, so you've spent a whole day sightseeing and are probably starving. You'll be glad to know that night markets in Taipei are an absolute must visit while you're in town. Apart from it being one of the best ways to mingle with the locals, it is also the go-to spot for cheap and delicious food as nothing will cost you anything above 3 US dollars. Taiwanese night markets are in fact so well known for delicious cheap food that many of these night market stalls are multi Michelin bib goman winners. The must try food markets in Taipei Pay, in my humble opinion, are the Shilin Night Market, Shilin Ye Si, Rao He Night Market, Rao He Ye Si, and Ningxia Night Market, Ningxia Ye Si. They are all easily accessible on the city train lines and are mostly open from 4 or 5 pm every single day till midnight. Though, if you're already a subscriber of mine, you would know this and more as I've previously already done food tours of all three of these night markets. If you haven't, that's okay, you still can. I have included some of the night markets at the end of this video to get you started but also feel free to check out my Taipei playlist here and also in my description box. Oh and by the way if you're traveling to Taipei for the first time I've also got some first timer tips for you in my what you need to know before going to Taipei video which I've linked right here at the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful, informative or perhaps just a little bit entertaining. I do hope that you have a fantastic day ahead or that you've already had a good day. As always I will see you very soon in the next video.